Sometimes life just doesn't feel fair. It really doesn't. We want to be healthy all the time, but we aren't. We want to always feel happy, but we don't. We want to never worry about money, but we do. We want to be calm and reasonable and smart and clean and organized, but sometimes we aren't. It can just feel like a lot, just overwhelming, but life has to go on. We have responsibilities. We have a home to take care of, family to feed, work that has to be done. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video today. What do we do to help us when we are feeling stressed or depressed or sad or overwhelmed? And just so you know, I do understand this. I have fibromyalgia, so I have this chronic illness that I've been dealing with for more than 30 years. I've experienced major depression in my life that was bad enough that I checked myself into a hospital. I started thinking about this this week because last Monday I went to get my hair done and it turns out that my hairdresser also did my mother's hair. She was 98 when she passed away last August and she lived with us for the last 12 years of her life and I'm the only daughter so naturally I miss her. I've done pretty well overall, but when I got my hair done, my hairdresser just kept talking about my mom and her funeral and everything, because she really loved my mom. So I came out of there and I just felt sad off and on ever since. That afternoon, I just allowed myself just to sit and feel sad. My husband brought me some dinner. I watched television and I just basically existed. The next morning I got up and I'm like, well, I still feel just as sad, but I can't do what I did yesterday. What am I gonna do to get going? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you some of the things that happened this week. Some of the things I accomplished, some things I learned, some things I tried, and hope that they will help you too. Maybe you're going through this right now. Maybe you've gone through it in the past or maybe you will in the future. I hope you don't suffer too much of this in the future. And if you relate to any of what I'm saying, maybe you would want to think about subscribing. We're working together to make our lives simpler, easier, decluttered, cleared with more happy moments each day. First of all, you have to believe and recognize that it takes cognitive and physical resources for your body to process emotional stress and illnesses. You aren't being lazy. You are experiencing symptoms. Laziness is an entirely different matter. Lazy is being unwilling to do work or use energy. That's not your problem. You want to do things. You want to take care of yourself. You want to clean and declutter and be productive. That's probably why you're here watching this video. You want to find some ideas about how you can do that. So try not to beat yourself up feeling that way, okay? You're just gonna make yourself feel worse. And try to take care of yourself. Try to get enough sleep and eat something healthy. That can be hard. Today I'm running on red licorice because I woke up and it's one of my sad days. And later I'll try to get myself something healthier to eat. And I had to make myself get dressed. It helps that I have a kindergartner to pick up at the bus stop and so I can't really show up in my nightgown. But on a day like today, I just put on some very comfortable clothes that are clean. I comb my hair. I don't have makeup on, but I look presentable. Some days last week, I managed to get myself looking kind of cute and put my makeup on, and that helped me a lot. So when we can, we need to try to take care of ourselves the best we can and to avoid wearing our oldest, smelliest, rivated clothes because that's all we think we're worth that day. You know, sometimes when we don't feel well emotionally, our clothing reflects how we feel. But you know, you can be comfortable in clean clothes too. You can be comfortable in something that's cute. 
Visualize the calm and comfort of a tidy environment. Remind yourself that taking care of your environment is a way to take care of yourself. One tiny thing achieved, like a clean countertop, an empty trash can, or a basket of folded laundry can lift your spirits. Use positive affirmations like, I can do this one small thing, or I've done hard things before and I could do this too. Instead of criticizing yourself for not moving, acknowledge that it may be hard right now, but this is temporary. Say something to yourself like, it's okay to feel stuck, but I can do one tiny thing and get unstuck. Try to learn or do something new. I know that might seem kind of upside down and backwards when you're not feeling good, but it's amazing what it can do for you. I have wanted to make sourdough bread and a few years ago, I got myself some starter. It was terrible starter. It failed. Well, this week, in the middle of me feeling so sad, my new sourdough starter came. I had ordered it on Amazon, and it was 233 years old from San Francisco. And it was a live starter, so I didn't have to try to come from the powdered form. And that thing got going really quickly, and I made some bread, and... It was successful and then I made popovers and they did well and I did biscuits and I have done pretzels and waffles and it seems like such a small thing but I have been interested in learning all about sourdough and the sourdough discards and it has given me something to think about besides just being sad. I would avoid social media doom scrolls and you know what I mean where you get on there and it's so addictive and you just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and then you start feeling worse and worse and worse but it's so hard to stop. Well Mel Robbins said that stopping doing that in fact she recommends that small business owners don't even go on social media. She said it's one of the most important things you can do for yourself and I think she's right. Reward yourself for small achievements. I mean, why not? What do you like? Do it or have it or get it if you succeed even a little. Recognize that your unsettled feelings will come and go. If they don't go or if they get worse and you find yourself spiraling down, please get some real help. If you can afford it, consider getting some therapy. There is no shame in it. I've gotten therapy during some extra difficult times of my life and it's been really helpful. If you have a really bad day or two or three or four, when you just can't do anything because you're just feeling so bad, well, forgive yourself. I think I've said that before. Don't beat yourself up, but this is a little bit different in that you should forgive yourself because the very best thing we can do for ourselves when we're experiencing this is to offer ourselves some self-compassion. I have found it helpful to say to myself out loud, I forgive you for not being able to get up and do anything today. It's okay. Notice if your muscles or your jaw are tense. If you find that they are, gently relax them. This can actually trick your mind into releasing any physical resistance you might be experiencing. Don't compare yourself to others. This is a big one. In the past, when I was still working at a job, and I started to resent having to take care of my home, I'd watch YouTube cleaning videos. And after a while, I'd find myself all motivated and excited to clean. But I had to be very careful not to compare myself to those creators or to watch channels where I felt shamed or criticized or felt inadequate or that I was failing because I couldn't keep up or do it their way. If you're like me and tend to find yourself sitting in a chair or on the couch watching TV on bad days, try to set a goal that you will do a few things before you get in that chair or on that couch. 
like maybe you need to clean off the counters in the kitchen or throw some trash away or load your dishwasher something have yourself do something before you let yourself relax on the couch you might be surprised even that once you do those few things you'll be encouraged and keep going but try to do something no matter how small it is Embrace imperfection. This is not a good time for you to strive to be perfect in anything you do. Just aim for progress. Start with the tiniest, easiest, and most appealing task. Or you might do what I do. Prioritize by deciding what bugs you the most and do that. Do not, do not, do not, do not make an extensive list of everything you need to do or could do. That will just overwhelm you more. Make a very short, doable list that you can feel good about and then cut it down a little bit. Make your space smell good. You could make a simmer pot, you could use some essential oils, burn a candle, or even open a window and let the sunshine and fresh air in. Complete one task, and if that's all you can do that day, quit without feeling guilty. You did something. Listen to music that lifts your mood or calms you down. If you've got a lot to do, or you feel like you need to do a lot, but you feel kind of overwhelmed by that, do it in pieces. So let's say you need to do the dishes, and they're all over the counter or on the table. First thing you do is stack the dishes in your sink. Then take the trash off the counters and take out the trash. Then declutter a flat surface and you could put things in a basket to sort later. Then go back and do the dishes. Use paper plates or disposable goods. If you're someone who really objects to that because of the environment, well then you don't need to. I understand there's some that are not made out of paper. But you need to remember that you're taking care of yourself and you're prioritizing. And it's more important that you eat and use paper plates than you not eat or use dishes and have them stacked everywhere and have them make you feel so bad that you're spiraling down. If you're cleaning, use cleaning products you enjoy. They don't have to be complicated. I have found my very best, most effective cleaning product which is so cheap is I get a spray bottle and put it with water and I put just a tiny tiny squirt of liquid Dawn in it and shake it up. I put the Dawn in after the water and it just cuts through everything. Found that once I got going with it then I don't have the complication of choosing which cleaning product I'm going to use. Another thing is to use some cleaning equipment that makes a difficult job easy and fun. So I had a horrible time cleaning this bathtub and the tile. And if you're doing it a traditional way, it is so fatiguing that I got so that I just dreaded it and I didn't do it for a long time and then it would get worse and worse, which made it harder and harder. And it was just my nemesis in the house. Well, I bought this brush thing a couple of years ago and then I got sick with long COVID and I didn't feel like cleaning anything and I just didn't use it. Well, recently I started using it and I just spray down the tub and the tile with this scrubbing bubbles with bleach and I use that thing. It is so easy and quick. It gets the grotiest stuff off of there and it's actually enjoyable. So I'm now cleaning that tub and the tile every week without any problem. Comes with different heads on it. So, so far I just used this one that I'm showing you. And I will link to it in Amazon. This is not sponsored or anything. This is just like a miracle to me. If you're having a hard time physically cleaning something, then consider getting something like that. Another thing I did for myself is that I got myself a Bissell steam cleaner to clean all my floors because the mopping was killing me off. And if you have the kind of lemon I do, then I had to dry it. So you'd sweep it first, then you mop it, and then you had to dry it three times over the floor. And it was so hard. 
I've learned to use the Bissell in a way that doesn't damage my laminate floor and it has absolutely changed my life. It was one of the best spans that I've ever made. So think about that because when you're going through things like this or you suffer through depression or stress or overwhelm, you need to do things to take care of yourself and getting a tool that can make it easier is taking care of yourself. Another thing you can do is just switch up the order you clean things. Maybe you always do the dusting first in this room, or you clean this bathroom on this certain day. We'll switch it up. Another thing you can do is just to clean something that you often forget about. That's why I'm cleaning this wood-burning stove. I was sitting in the family room and I looked over there and I saw, wow, the glass is all dirty and I can't see the fire and I want to see the fire because the fire comforts me. So I decided on one of my really bad sad days that I was going to clean that and I actually had a good time doing it. Then the next day we started a fire and I just sat there and I just felt so comforted. But that wouldn't have happened if I decided to do something out of order. And then cleaning that led me to cleaning that family room because then there was ash that had kind of flown around. So I needed to dust. And then I decided, well, I better vacuum off the couches. Besides, they had cat hair on them and they were gross. And then I decided to vacuum that room. So I ended up cleaning that room, which is really different for me because normally when I dust the downstairs, I dust the entire downstairs or I clean the entire floor because of how the rooms go together. Basically one big floor. But this week, my sad week. I'm still kind of in a sad week. I cleaned that one room and it wasn't very hard because the room is not that big and I felt really good like I'd really achieved something. So just switching it up can make a big difference. Take out the trash. When you kind of down or you're struggling, it's really easy to kind of leave trash around or let your garbage cans get too full. And that really starts to wear on your, your brain and your mind and your spirit. So take the trash out. Now, if you find out that you are taking out the trash all day long because your garbage can isn't big enough, well, you may consider doing something about it. So we only had one garbage can in the kitchen what we did is we took some shelves out of this cabinet and found out there was enough room for us to put two garbage cans and for us to put some garbage bags in between and that has just been a game changer. If you don't have something like that, then maybe you could just get a bigger garbage can, one that's easier to work with, one that has wheels even. Move slowly and honor the feelings that you're experiencing. Remember, that bad feeling isn't you. If you don't fight it, it will pass. If your brain starts talking trash, you talk back to it. Don't let your brain get away with that. Do something that will cheer up the space, like putting up some holiday decorations or a new bright kitchen towel or light a candle. That's why I suddenly decided to decorate my kitchen for Valentine's Day. I had not planned on doing it. In fact, I had decided on skipping it this year, but I was having one of those sad, bad days and I thought, well, maybe it will kind of cheer me up to do it. So I got out my Valentine's bin and I used the opportunity to go through and declutter it, which felt good. It always feels good to me to get rid of things that I don't want or need anymore. And then I had fun rearranging it, just switching your pillows around from room to room. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just something that will kind of give you a new outlook on what you're doing. Listen to uplifting or inspiring videos, podcasts, or books. I found that's really helpful. And there are a lot of YouTube videos like mine or Mel Robbins where they just talk all the way through. So it's kind of like a podcast. And so I'll put one of those on and I'll listen to them. And they help me keep going. And there are videos, podcasts, or books. See if that helps you. You 
You can set a timer and see how much you can get done during that time. We usually overestimate how long it takes us to do something, and you might surprise yourself how much you're able to accomplish. can gamify it. Like say you're someone who really likes video games and when you do certain tasks you pick up points or gold coins or jewels. Assign yourself different rewards for different tasks and then add them up and you could go to different levels and give yourself a reward so it could be really fun. This is something that I do and I talk about it in almost every video or you see me doing it in almost every video because my house is just one big decluttering project and if I tried to do it at all I'd be so overwhelmed I couldn't get through it I would feel paralyzed and I know I'd make a lot of mistakes I think it would depress me further so I have decluttering bags I always keep one upstairs and one downstairs and as I'm just moving through my day and I come across things that I realize I'm not really using that or I thought I'd use it and I didn't use it, then I stick it in the bag. Like last week I decluttered the Valentine's bin and then when I was dusting the family room I, I remembered, oh wait, I've got all these VHS tapes that have been sitting here for years just in case somebody ever wanted to watch them, which is ridiculous. We don't even have a VHS as player so I went ahead and bagged them up and it felt really good and then you can take those decluttered items to a donation center this really can make you feel like you've accomplished something it gets you out of the house and when you're feeling this way it's really good to get out of the house don't make things worse for yourself Use the one touch rule. So if you take your dirty clothes off, put them in the hamper. Don't just throw them across the furniture or a chair or on the floor because because then you have to touch them twice. Throw trash directly in the can. What I do when I get the mail, I'll sit over the trash can and I'll just throw all the junk mail straight in the can. Then if I have any bills to pay, I'll pay them right then. If I have to file something, I'll file it right then. And I try to do it in those areas where I would do those things so I don't even have to move about my house. It makes it so much easier. It takes mental energy to think about these things and you're trying to avoid adding extra mental energy. If this sounds great, but you find you have trouble getting going with things, meaning that you tend to procrastinate, here's a video about overcoming procrastination that can help you. Well, I hope to see you next time. Bye.